Hi guys and welcome to uh, another Radiant Silver Labs video with me, Gaz Murphan and uh, today I'm going to be showcasing a little app I've written in the last two days called Lapsier Rouge um, but first I'm going to showcase some of the images you can make with it these are just some things I've made in the last uh, few days literally I just started this last night I think so I'll just briefly go through these so there's, uh, this, some of them are screen grabs with the UI and some of them later I didn't do that but as you can see these images are pretty wild and wacky so what it does is it takes uh, your time lapse image sequence let's say it's JPEGs or RAWs or PNGs and then if you imagine from left to right it uses each frame as time goes by as the image progresses so on the left it's hard to explain actually on the left it might be say 5 a.m of the screen and on the far right of the screen it could be 2 p.m. so it takes chunks out of your lapse and uses them as slices all the way along so you can basically see how the lapse progressed and how the day went and it's produced some very interesting results and here we go I'll just go through a few more so that was the first time I realized you know it was working to the point where I could get from nighttime to daytime and these are there's a cloudy night <clears throat> and then um, you know just general tests nighttime to daytime again that was really happy with that that's the uh, fireworks on the Taipei 101 building as you can see it was dark before the fireworks went off and then it was dark after a um, few experimental ones from playing around you know and you can lower, uh, you can change the intervals and stuff so you can mess around. I'm about to show you all that. Um, just want to get through these just so you get the general idea. That was me having a shave. Some of these are rotating lapses, so they're very different. Uh, the camera sort of catches up with the slices, produces interesting effects. <clears throat> but uh, that was uh, rotating. Um, <clears throat> and it, even as uh, it doesn't produce exactly what you imagine it is kind of produces nice glitchy video uh, images that you could use for various purposes this is in Macau this, that's the Macau pen or whatever they call it from a hotel so on the left you can see it was dark in my room and as I left the time lapse going it got brighter and brighter and brighter it was a horrible day unfortunately there's another one and another one and another one just to show it uh, progressing and this was in Kua in Malaysia which showed this one my best result at the at the beginning shows perfectly how it goes from dark on the left to day on the right with multiple stages in the middle and at this point it was hard coded to 32 pixels per strip which I've fixed now you can change whatever with a with a slider and, and these are all uh, you know going from left to right you know vertical uh, slices but I, just about an hour ago I have implemented horizontal slices too so I'll show all that in a second. Here's just another example of that. So when you move the camera mid-lapse, of course, it causes this sort of glitchy madness. And that's an HDR one, in fact. You can see the three exposures, medium, low, high, I think. Um, and it's used each one and then gone into the actual result. I, writ I wrote a rec recursive function so it could search files and folders. I've actually taken that out for now, so you have to give it an actual folder of proper uh, images um, it won't recursively look yet uh, I'll add that back in the future but actually it makes more sense for you to know what's in a folder that you give it on the left there you can see it goes from you know like sort of pinky and gets brighter and brighter and this is a one I timed I did so it would be half day half night in the middle of the, the building there and I think that's pretty impressive actually you can see the clouds uh, how they develop um, this is a plant I time lapsed over uh, about 13 hours. A plant that opens at night and closes during the day. You can see you can see there how the daylight uh, moves through. Um, that's just some mad cloud stuff again. <clears throat> Obviously, you wouldn't get this sort of imagery in in anything else that I can think of. You know, so you see these streaks. You can see how the development of the clouds went. And that's a bus journey. That's a bus journey. It's another bus journey. You can see there where the bus stopped on those bits where it's static. Now this was a, a tripod I had attached to some blue tack, so it was slowly sinking. Um, just some experiments with the uh, 
sky. Having a drink in a bar on the beach. Picked up the lapse camera there and moved it. And that's a rotating one too, I think. That's why it's so wild. This is another rotating one. And that was one too. Again, you can see where I picked it up. And this is where I discovered uh, horizontal uh, slicing. So instead of going left to right, it goes from top to bottom. And actually it produces better results in, in many cases. That's quite beautiful. That one's awesome. Look at that. Remember, these are unprocessed apart from being composed of many images. That is uh, the fireworks. I'm I've still got to get a better image of the fireworks, but that's good proof there how good that would look. That's the fireworks going off at the top of the 101. Um, really cool. More clouds and stuff. And again, clouds. And that's it. So I'm going to run the app while it's already running here. So what you do is you click on this thing and you go to your time lapse collection. Here I have a directory called Flat 2. And inside I have many, many lapses. So I'll just go uh, into the Moto X directory. These are all made on my Android app called Lapstastic, which has not actually been released. Uh, I've been working on it for about nine years, but uh, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> Personal use, and I, but I will get it out there. So you open that, right, and it tells you up here how many source images you've you've got. And you can straight away, you can just hit Process. And what that'll do is use the default settings, which is 32 pixel wide uh, slice skip 25 images every time that means that the first image will be 0 the next image will be 25 the next image will be 50 the next image will be 75 so you can change that obviously if I put that down to 1 so it only skips to the next one and run it again then obviously I get more uh, I get more images so I can actually make a complete picture it's almost like a time machine weirdly so if I go um, <clears throat> And this thing here, images to skip at the start. Usually when I set up a lapse, there's, a, there's, a, there's loads of miscellaneous ones at the beginning that don't quite match. So I've, I've added that just in case you have that problem. Uh, and you can use it to skip on as well, you know, like that. But then I'm only going to have uh, 200 shots. But So I can increase this, I can put this width down to 1, and images to skip to 1. Now it'll take a long time because it has to load every single JPEG and you'll see that in the bottom left in the console. It actually has to load the JPEG and then, uh, scale, and then scale it down to the exact size of this canvas which is unfortunately hard coded at, 19, at 1600 by 900 at the moment so that's all you're going to get until I fix that. But it loads the image, scales it and then it cuts out the necessary slice and then paints it so it takes a while with uh, the width of the slice, the smaller it is, the longer it takes, but what it means here is that each single pixel x-wise as you go along, each single pixel is another image so depending on how long your lapse went, uh, I think I lapsed at this point I think I literally, see it stopped there and I haven't cleared the old image because sometimes you can produce cool images with that, but you can click uh, clear preview yeah, every single uh, pixel is one of your lapse shots. So if it's one every second, then every pixel represents one second. If it's one every minute, each pixel represents one minute. So really it boils down to your lapses. And, you know, sometimes you find ones that you didn't even think were great. And you, you think, oh, that works excellent because of whatever reason. So, yeah. Uh, there should be a stop process button here to stop a render. There isn't, but you can actually mess with it. You could go like that and finish it quickly. Bit of a hack. You can move the width slider there. But let's just try a few more. Um, I haven't named some of these very well. But if I just uh, run that, see, there's one. It's all a lot of this view of the Taipei 101 because that's the view of my bathroom and I like it. So you can see on the left there, they are the ones where I was setting up and it's not perfect. So I can move that image just to skip at the start to about 30. And you'll see now it actually lines up. Now I can set the width to 1. Images to skip to 1. Now I've got 800 source images and given that this is 1600 wide that means it'll stop halfway. So if I make the width 2 pixels 
And bear in mind, you can click on the end of these to, to move them smoothly, to move them nicely. So if I make that two pixels, that should actually basically fill the window, and you can see it moving along there, rendering. Um, well, I'm not sure why it looks liney like that. Uh, that's a bit strange, actually. It shouldn't be like that. No, I can't think of a reason for that. That's the uh, I did see that earlier, but um, I don't know. See, if I want to speed that up, I'll just move the pixels wide right there. So, but the, the other thing is, uh, let's pick a better one that doesn't mess up here. Yeah? Um, November Sunrise. Right. The, so there's 2,500 here. So I can afford to skip maybe two frames and see what happens when I render that. So remember, every single slice here is another photo. So the aim is obviously to see the the idea of what you were doing in laps in one picture. So you're trying to get, you know, the the progress of something slow summed up in a relatively faster way. Well, this is the same, but does it even quicker in one image? And it's all experimental and weird. You know, it might not look good, but I'm actually really impressed by some of the results I've been getting. <clears throat> and obviously I can speed this up if, uh, if I cache the files if you've already loaded them and things like that. I did have that in but I took it out because it really needs to clear the memory. Loading this many files and scaling them and that, it's, it's deadly on the on the memory. Um, you know, it, it can use uh, up to 20 gigabytes within within no time just doing this loading and scaling thousands of images now you can see it's it's onto a different lap so it must have been where I decided I'd had enough and I picked up the camera without hitting the stop button on my app uh, but that actually also produces really interesting results like that and after this this has always been this has all been vertical slices top to bottom I'm going to do um, horizontal ones now and that you can see it stop. Uh, well, I forgot to mention in the window in the top there when it's rendering, it'll say rendering. Please wait, and you'll see that actually things are being loaded. But well, what's happened there is actually run out of memory, <laughs> um, which is annoying. But if I quit it and reload it, um, it saves your preferences. In fact, so what I'm going to do now is do the horizontal version and uh, change the height to one and. Because it's 2,500 and your your canvas is 900, you maybe afford to skip three. And obviously, the more you skip, the more change you see in the uh, image. So, at the top, you can tell it was dark, and now it's getting lighter. You can see the way the clouds move and. I mean, obviously the camera struggles because it's just a mobile camera to get things so you get these like lines where I think on a real good SLR they'd probably be a lot smoother because it would maybe if you were manually doing it or using some other techniques it would it would smoothly change the light settings but you can't do that on mobiles at the moment well you can uh, API 2 for Android is coming out and I'm gonna rewrite my app uh, my Android app Lapstastic uh, look at that and um, re-release it when it's been perfected with lots of new features and works on camera API too. All this time I've just been testing it personally and uh, keeping a list of good features. I might take a screen grab of that. I've got a little Facebook uh, gallery. So yeah, let's try some more imagery. Uh, from the bathroom I have lots of good views. all of that same uh, building but it's a great view and I was really shocked to see how much different the horizontal slices are and adds a whole new dimension oh. oh I've only got 500 shots and I've skipped three so it's only managed to do a little bit so if I go do images to skip one it'll skip none of them basically I should probably put that as a none and height of the slice three then that should produce a 1500 uh, 
tall image. So in fact, I just need two, right? I want a thousand tall to roughly fill that image. And there is an export PNG button there, but it doesn't work at the moment. It exports a, an empty PNG, so you're going to have to screen grab things if you want them. Um, clear the preview, clears the window, like I showed. Clear console, just clears that console on the left. Console on the left is basically useless. just keeps you up to date with what's happening, you know. Um, and that just looks like an ordinary photo, ironically. So if you wanted to mess with that, you can go, right, all right, well, let's skip two images and have the height four pixels and that will render quicker too. Oops. Uh, oh no, is it rendering? Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. Something's rendering. Yeah. That's so uh, hard to tell. I should have a line where they're uh, where they're being drawn, you know. Well you can tell by you just make the pixel size massive and then render and you can tell. That's just not a particularly good uh, lapse for it. Um, let's go into Galaxy, oh not Galaxy, uh, Butterfly from Bathroom. Is this where I just was? Well, this is the fireworks one. We'll try, oops, not output. We'll just try the fireworks one. So what you want to give it is also is a folder just of JPEGs. So there's 1057 or any picture, not JPEGs. I think should be able to load anything. What will happen there is it'll produce an image about the size of this and any moment where the fireworks went off will be highlighted but yeah I don't know why being able to catch them and the funny thing is you can change uh, to vertical halfway through like that. <laughs> Whoa that's actually that's actually a good one and you could use this tool for like glitch art and you know possibly even use it you know, live in, in some sort of environment. If you got good with it and you had like, it was a bit better, a bit more sliders. and So I'm going to knock that down a bit. And it's hard to believe what happens, but see, you lose the details. So sometimes you have to really remember the actual settings to try and get the exact image you want. And it becomes a strange uh, art, like just 33 to 30, uh, 2 to 33. Stops it working. It's 32. Oh no. I lied. Or whatever it was on. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of obvious really, but you, you take some thinking about. Um, shrieks. That's meant to be streaks. Let's see, so this was a morning where it was streaky. And I've got 1800 shots. Let's skip two and let's make the width of the slice seven. And you can see the day progressing. If I skip more, the deal progress more. And you can do that in real time even, like I said. That's not really a feature. It's just an unprotected setup. Well, let's run it again. You can see there's quite interesting results though. I'm quite a slow app, um, but you can't blame it, and I can optimize it. Obviously, the scaling and things like that, and loads of stuff could be done. Also, if you run this on an SSD, it should be lightning. Most of this is coming off a really slow external USB drive. See, I've skipped too many images there, so it's ran out of ability to finish the picture. But I can make the width of the slice bigger, and that will allow it to finish the image. A lot of it, it's just trial and error in many ways. I don't know, you know, any better than anyone else how this will work. I just was really trying to think hard because I have so many lapses at the same place. I'll do a horizontal one while we're watching. I thought, why have I wasted my time? What am I doing? You know, no one wants to see that place all the time, over and over and over again in a two-hour special of just that view. Even though it's amazing, some of the views I've got and some of the mornings. Um, 
let's skip too many let's go to skip none and uh, what I realized was well there's got to be a way to utilize that in a very cool way that would make it such a cool filmic technique that nobody would really done it because it was so much effort doing the same place over and over and uh, then I thought if you aligned every image I've got because they're not all aligned get them all aligned perfectly so they are all literally of the same place over the last nine years or so then somehow had a piece of software which could put all of that in the same image all the most interesting things that have happened over those nine years um, in one image or you know yeah just one image maybe that would be a really good use so I was looking for it and I was trying it on After Effects and I was trying it manually on Photoshop and, and then I realized what am I doing you know this is the perfect application of code and I like the way this one's drawing outlook it's really uh, much better than the other one isn't it it's somehow uh, gives you a better representation of what really happened sometimes in horizontal So yeah, then I came up with this, and so far so good, it's free by the way, you can download it, I'll put a link in the comment below, I'm going to put a little website up with some of the examples I just showed, and a link to this video, I'm going to put a donate button, button out there, you don't have to pay anything, and I don't expect anything, but I'm going to put one there anyway, because the time lapse community is a, is a decent community, they, they love their tools, and they're very grateful. I know I am for, for various things over the years, like the Canon Hackers Development Kit and things like that. So if anyone wants to donate, do so, whatever you feel like. But if you don't want to, you can use this software. Hopefully you can tell me what's wrong with it, give me ideas for better features, and it'll just generally uh, evolve that way. Now I'm going to be back in a second, so I'm going to pause it. That image, as I say, is good looks almost like a real photograph but you can tell on the top there it's all stretched out and lovely okay I'm back what I was doing there is quite ludicrous I was defrosting beer in the sun which I left in uh, the freezer when I came home drunk to cool it down and forgot about but I've been defrosting it and using it let's have a look what this one is oh. I don't know what this one is, which is why you may hear a slushy sound because they're hard to defrost. But that was pretty successful. Mm. This one looks excellent. Really cool, that, eh? And I've only been messing with horizontal slices for hours, really. Wow. So this one has 6,417 images. So given that I'm only using 900 uh, pixels down, we could skip, you know, seven or eight images on the images to skip thing. And that would produce, you know, a very more dramatic effect. Seven times more time will have passed in the image. So let's do that. Let's put it to seven images to skip. Process, and you should see a more dramatic effect. Mm. You can see already it looks more daytime in the morning there, in the top there. Well, that looks absolutely amazing. A shame it gets a bit grey in this country after after the beautiful sunrises it gets quite generic. If it carried on being amazing it would be good. But you can see that is actually really nice. I'm going to try and skip um, a bit less. Let's say five. Well, it's still rendering. Oh, okay. And there is problems with this app. There's the wind, the main window doesn't paint properly at the moment. So if you drag something in front of it, you can distort your image. Like I've got that blue there. That was from the tooltip.
I like that. The top bit coming in looks really good. <clears throat> Now just uh, let's have a look what it looks like in the uh, wait for it to finish rendering. I should have a please wait window or a, or a stop button, but I do not yet. But this is only 0 0.0.2. So all right, come on, yeah, render done. Um, I sh it doesn't say render done down there, but that vanishes. And some of the messages I have over here, I'll put them in there into the app as well. Oh no, I was just going to. Uh, do vertical right so let's see what this looks like interesting and because we've got 2,000 wide let's see what happens if you skip quite a few you see the day of progressing if you make the pixels one and you'll see a more fine grain one I think you get the idea now and uh, any cool features I would uh, love to hear them See, that's great, isn't it? You can see the evolution of the sky right from the left there. Now, obviously, I've run out of pictures because I've skipped too many. So you can go back to, say, three should fill that roughly. <clears throat> and also, yeah, the, you, you want a more dramatic effect. Sometimes you want to up it, but sometimes you lower it and you, to keep something on the left so you can see there on the left it's more morning time for longer and I think this is going to be a great image actually and you get that sort of blurred feel sometimes it looks like bad JPEGing but actually that's just your brain you know because telling you so because the the algorithm for JPEGing is obviously works in strips and and tiles so when when the, this produces strips and tiles you look at it and you think oh you know, it's just a low quality image, but actually it's not. Every piece of the image is perfectly high quality. Although technically at the end of the day, if you zoom in, it's still a JPEG on, on my stuff. But I'd love to see this done with RAWs and in, a, in a much higher resolution. Once I get the app capable of um, you know, working in higher res and stuff like that, it'll be awesome. <clears throat> I like that though. You definitely see a change. And we ran out of memory. Out of memory on the Java heat space. Now let's have a look how much memory it's using. I've still got 12 gig available, but you know what things are like. Well, right now it's using 8.5 gig. That's, that's quite a lot. So if I kill that app and uh, reload it. And by the way, it comes with a little script where you can specify how much memory you want. And actually, um, I've specified, I'm running it from the development environment now, but on the script that comes with it, it, it specifies lots of memory, you might want to adjust it, but it won't run out of memory, I don't think, unless of course you don't have much. And coming up to 30 minutes, I don't know how the hell this happened, but I've made a 30 minute video about this little app that I made, and it's not, it's nearly 8am, you know, I feel like I'm doing the game videos or something, or maybe that's it, um, but... I don't know, just a cool little app. Thought I might uh, share it with people and hear what people think, and maybe there's some other good ways to do it. That's horizontal, that's vertical. Uh, I've got one minute left. Let me see if I can find a better lap. So I've been playing with this all night. I've done some amazing things, but um, you know, you know how it is. You never get the right ones when you're demoing. But yeah, you can basically see. It's interesting to see. That's what it is. It's interesting. Oh, I selected the wrong directory there. I have a great flower one, but uh, where it is, I do not know. Snail. Yeah, there's a snail making its way along. Vertical slices. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Download it for free, let me know what you think.